So there are times where we are going to want to do an experiment instead of just an observational study or survey. Okay, and so inference for experiments are going to be kind of a part of what we need to recognize as well. And so how are things different if we do an inference for an experiment? They are just slightly different, not that much different, but <clears throat> here are the most important highlights um, and why. So, first of all, if we're doing an experiment, how do you know if something is an experiment? How do you know if something is an experiment instead of an observational study? Not to, be, because we've had hypothesis when we were doing an observational study to see if there's a difference between the two groups. You have an idea. It has something to do with a control group, ish, ish. How about, what else? How do I know if it's an experiment versus an observational study? What did you say, Leonard? You are comparing, but what do you have to do in an experiment to make it an experiment? Find a baseline uh, data. You have to use an independent You're kind of, yeah, you're, you manipulate using what? A... Treatment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. An experiment. Experiment imposes a treatment. Now, here's the cool thing. If we get statistically significant results. Uh, how do I know if something is a statistically significant result? Um, alpha. What about alpha? Sort of. Yes. My p-value is less than alpha, so I reject the null hypothesis because I have convincing evidence, and therefore that is called statistically significant results. If we get statistically significant results between the treatment group, between the treatment group and control group, this is big. We have proven <clears throat> if we get statistically significant results between the treatment group and the control group, we have proven causation. We can finally then say that these two things that we thought were correlated and we did a very good experiment and we controlled the treatment and the experiment group or the treatment and the control group. If we show that that is statistically significant, we got a p-value that was lower than alpha, then that is now causation. We can finally say that we think that this treatment we gave caused something to happen. Okay? All right, how does it look different in the state plan do conclude? The independent condition can be assumed. Because everybody's reaction to the treatment or the placebo or whatever it is, is independent of everyone else's. So in an experiment, we can ex assume the independent condition. We don't have to check that 10 times the sample size is less than the population size. That's just silly. Also, random assignment satisfies the random condition. Okay, so a couple little tweaks. 
Basically, it's literally just that your independent condition can be assumed. You don't have to deal with the 10% rule. And your random assignment satisfies the random condition. So you don't have to go get a simple random sample off the street in order to do an experiment. You can do random assignment and that will take care of it. All right, let's do an example. Raise your hand if you went to preschool. You went to school before kindergarten. Raise your hand if you went to preschool. All right, look around. Those people who went to preschool have less of a possibility of being on government assistance when they get older. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes. That is what this experiment is all about. I don't know that I agree with that either, but that's what this experiment was about. To study the long-term effects of preschool programs for poor children, researchers developed an experiment. They recruited 123 children who had never attended preschool from low-income families in Michigan. Researchers randomly assigned 62 of the children to attend preschool paid for by the study budget and the other 61 to serve as a control group who would not go to preschool. One response variable of interest was the need for social services as adults. Over a 10-year period, 38, 38 children in the preschool group and 49 in the control group have needed social services. Does this study provide convincing evidence that preschool reduces the later need for social services? No. Let's find out. State. We will what? Test at alpha equals. Oh my gosh, you guys, it did not tell us what significance level to use. What should we do? We're going to use 0.05. Now, our null hypothesis. What should our null hypothesis be? Um, preschool less than non-preschool. P1 less than P2. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Whoops. Time out. Stop. If you're writing that down, you should not be writing that down. Why is that wrong? That one needs an equal to sign. And then... What we just wrote should be the alternative. I know. We can blame it on Nilu. Sorry. It's okay. We'll forgive you. Not like anyone else in this room has ever given a wrong answer. Now, what do we need to do? We got to define our parameters. P1 equals the true proportion of preschool attendees who need social services later in life. I know that's super exciting there. All right, and then P2 equals the true proportion of non-preschool attendees who need social services later in life. Okay? You are totally welcome to do that. You can do the little quotation marks, ditto marks, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> you do not have to rewrite that. All right, you guys, that's how you state. Now, notice that this is pretty much exactly the same as we did yesterday so far, right? This is no different than we did with a, an, an observational study. What's next? Plan. Let's plan. Random. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have a simple random sample? Yes. We do not have a simple random sample. But it's always satisfied. It says that they recruited these children. But what do we have? 
assignment. We have random assignment of the subjects to the two groups. We have random assignment of subjects. We've got 62, go to preschool, Shh. and 61, non-preschool. So we did have random assignment. It, we did not have an SRS. We did not go randomly select students to come be a part of this uh, experiment. They were recruited. <laughs> They voluntarily came to the st study, and we randomly assigned them. Independent. We are going to check this differently because of the fact that this is an experiment. For an experiment, we can say assumed for experiments. The reason we can do that is because we are basically assuming that each person's response to the treatment is independent of every other person's response, which is very much easy to assume in an experiment. Everybody experiences things differently. So we can assume that to be true for experiments. And that's literally all you have to write for independent for experiments. Normal. There is nothing different about the normal condition. Yes, sir. So if it's, uh, if it's an experiment, the only thing you have to write all the experiments. That's all you have to write if it's an experiment, no matter what procedure you're using. Whether it's an interval, a one prop, a two prop, a Z prop, whatever, it doesn't matter. If it's an experiment and there's a treatment imposed, you can write that every time. Okay? All right. The normal condition is checked the same exact way as it was yesterday. So we've got N1, P hat 1. Now, what was the sample size of the preschool group? Uh, 62. 62. Now, answer this question very carefully. What is the P hat 1 value? What is the sample proportion of preschool children who needed social services later in life? There it is. There it is. Finally, 38 over 62. Remember, P hat has to be a, a proportion of something. Now, with that being said, Sydney's not wrong in that six or 38 is going to be what this equals, right? That equals 38. What is that number right there? That is the number of successes in the preschool group. Success being that they needed social services later in life. The reason that that's considered the success is because that's the, that's the variable we're testing. Okay? So I know that seems like that's not success, but it is. All right, now we're going to check N1, 1 minus P hat 1, 62 times. What is the P the 1 minus p hat 1 value. 24. There we go. 24 over 62 is the p hat, the 1 minus p hat 1 value, and that does equal 24. That is the number of failures, failure being the number of kids in the preschool group that did not need social services. Again, I'm not saying that success or failure is whether you need social services, but that's what it's qualified as in, in context of what we're doing here. All right, N2, P hat 2. What is the N2 value? 61. And what is the P hat 2 value? There we go. 49 over 61. So 49 is the number of successes in the non-preschool group. So 49 of the kids needed social services in the non-preschool group. All right, N2, 1 minus P hat 2? 12. 12 over 61, which is 12. All right, what do I have to say about all these numbers? They're all greater than 10. These are all greater than or equal to 10, so the sampling distribution of p hat 1 minus p hat 2 is approximately normal. Whee! 
Okay, so before we go to the calculator and plug this all in, 38 out of 62 of the preschool kids needed social services later. 49 out of 61 of the non-preschool kids needed social services later. Do you guys think there's a difference? Do you think that preschool made a difference in the need for social services later based on that data? It kind of looks like there's some difference here. 38 out of 62, 49 out of 61. But is it sampling variability or is there really a causation here? That's what we're going to do the test for to see if that is true. Alrighty, do, 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 do. from here down, from do down, actually from normal down, from basically from normal down, everything is exactly the same, whether it's an experiment or an observational study. Literally the only things that are different are the random and the independent. Do, we're gonna use a two prop Z test. Same exact thing we used yesterday. So, where do we need to go in our calculator? Stat, test, six. Stat, test, six. All right, X1. This is our number of successes in the preschool group. What do we put here? 38. N1. 62. X2. 49. N2. 61, and are we doing P1 does not equal P2, P1 is less than P2, or P1 is greater than P2? Which one are we using? We're using the middle one, the less than, okay? All right, here's the deal. We know that this is a normal distribution. We verified that. If, if preschool makes no difference, then we assume that P1 equals P2, and there is zero difference, okay? But we went and took a sample, P hat one, P hat two. Well, we didn't take a sample. We did an experiment, and we got a P hat one and a P hat two, and we're gonna look at their difference. Your Z, your Z test statistic tells us how far our difference is from being the same. So what is our Z test statistic? Did you got a negative? Who got a negative? Did everybody get a negative? Everybody got a negative? Perfect. Negative two point what? Three two. Okay, why is it negative? It's because our difference was not. Negative, okay? Oh. Meaning our proportion of preschool kids that needed social services was lower than the proportion of kids who did not, who needed social services who did not go to preschool. I said that wrong. Our P hat one, the proportion of preschool kids who needed social services was lower than the non-preschool kids that needed social services. So when I did my difference, my P hat one minus P hat two, I got a negative difference, and it was 2.32 standard units from the middle. So right here-ish, this is where my P hat one minus P hat two was. If you literally calculate whatever 38 over 62 is, and subtract 49 over 61, you would get a number that is 2.32 standard units below the um, hypothesis of them equaling each other, okay? And finally, what is the area that is as extreme or more extreme than that difference that could occur due to sampling variability? This is our p-value, and what did you guys get for your p-value? 0 0.0102, okay? Cool, let's conclude. First word in a conclusion statement for a hypothesis test. P -value. 
p-value. The p-value is 0 0.0102. How does that compare to the alpha in this problem? That is less than the alpha of 0 0.05. So what are we going to do when the p-value is low? Reject we are rejecting this null hypothesis. There is convincing evidence. that preschool reduces the need for social services. Basically, I just rephrased this. The true P1 is less than the true P2. I basically said that in context of this problem. <clears throat> so how do you guys feel about this? You non preschool people, you might need some social services later in life. Looks like you're going to need some government assistance. How do you feel about this? Guess what? You know how I know that's true? Because this proves causation. We got a statistically significant result here, so we have causation. Does any, do any of you have an issue with this? Bias. You think there's some bias here? Could be. How do you know if it was a good preschool? Oh, how do I know? How, how do I know about the preschool? Like, was it good, bad? I don't know. Is there something going on here? If you look at this, and you go end up going to a bad preschool. Oh, what? oh, you look at this, you enroll your kid in a bad preschool, they get in one of those preschool gangs and are all of a sudden just on the streets. Yes. Did your kid go to preschool here? She went to preschool, but not here. Oh. Why? I know. Um, okay, so final question, and then we're going to be done with these. Could we have made some kind of an error? Yes. What kind? Type one. Type one. What if, what if this gets published in some sort of newspaper and someone says, whoa, 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 whoa. You're talking about telling people that preschool is going to keep them out of having government assistance. We need to make sure that we're getting good evidence. So let's change that alpha to 0.01. If we changed our alpha to 1%, would it have changed the decision? Yeah. Yep, it would have flipped it. So all we got to do is manipulate the numbers and we'll flip the results. Yes, ma'am. What are we talking about? Yeah, I don't know. All right, cool. What was the study about? This was about preschool helping you not need social services later, like government assistance later in life. Like money help? Yeah, like food stamps or social security checks or all kinds of fun stuff. Why would that be? I, it, that's what we're just proving right now that it does, apparently. I, I don't know. I don't know what this is. All right, cool. Do you guys have questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, feelings? Lots of feelings, I'm sure. Very good.